When I began working on this hoof, it was obvious I was dealing with rocks, but I couldn't imagine just how many rocks were below the surface. Welcome back to Nate the Hoof Guy. Once one rock makes its way into the white line, it's easy for others to follow and they continue to work their way underneath that sole until they have underrun it. That's what's happened here. I'm gonna use my grinder here to give us a bigger access point to get all of these rocks out of there. Well, there's two, but there's many more to come. Every time I think I've got it flushed out, more rocks will reveal themselves. As I continue to trim, I can feel more coming in contact with my knife blade. And once again, it's another sizable rock. Maybe this rinse will finally do it, but I think we all know that is not the case. At this point, I was starting to feel like I was never going to get to the end of them. Now I'll bet you're thinking to yourself, those rocks have got to be doing a number on those hoof knives. And they do, but there's really no way around that. And that's why I carry multiple knives with me each day, dealing with rocks and sand and things like that. They're going to get dull. Just switch those knives up and move on. Now, even though this hoof was absolutely packed full of rocks, they really weren't the problem here. Likely what had happened is there was a white line issue back some time, and these rocks were able to find that defect and work their way all the way in there. Really, for the most part, this hoof is sound. There is a new layer of hoof horn there. There was just one small area of openness, so we did put a block on that other claw, and then we cleaned this area out really well and treated that one small little area with some salicylic acid and gave her a wrap, and that was going to be it. Just a little few touch-up trims here is all we have left to do, and this girl is going to feel a whole lot more comfortable. As always, guys... Thanks for watching, and we will see you all on the next one.